So, a uh, an incident went viral today that I I think I have a responsibility to talk about. I've been tagged it in a bunch of times on Instagram, and I figure I'm going to give it my my best today while I'm driving home from the gym. Excuse me, or pardon me for being a little bit moist today. So if you haven't seen the video, here is what it looks like right here above me. Uh, this is an incident out of Crawford County, Arkansas. Um, I, don't know, I'm, I might ramble a bit. I'm going to do my best. I will say right off the bat that this is not a great incident. These officers did not do a great job. They did not do a good job. They did not do what they are supposed to do as police officers. What I like to do in my videos is explain to you what's going through those officers' heads while they were doing what they are doing. If you believe that this is me making excuses for bad police officers, I'm sorry that you are not intelligent enough to understand the English words coming out of my mouth. You can go somewhere else. Alrighty? So, the incident begins with... Um, well, I don't know exactly how it began, but these officers came in contact with this gentleman uh, after it was reported that he either assaulted, threatened to assault, or spit on a clerk at a gas station somewhere else. I don't know exact details. The exact details are not extremely important. The officers came in contact with this man, had a confrontation. It's alleged that he spit on an officer and it swung on an officer, tried to assault a police officer. That's Two felonies if you're in the state of Ohio, and I'm assuming Arkansas has very similar laws. Um, oh, shoot. It's not assault with a bottle of fluid. I had it earlier. Um, doesn't matter. But assault on a PO is one. Shoot. We charge this all the time. Doesn't matter. But it's two felonies. And the officers go to place him under arrest. He begins resisting arrest. A short time after the officers go to put him under arrest is when this uh, bystander starts filming the incident with their cell phone. I'm going to give the officers in the beginning of this the benefit of the doubt. I'm assuming that he was on the ground on his stomach holding his hands under him. Uh, this is a very common thing for police officers to encounter. It's When their hands are under them like this, it's almost impossible to get your arm up under them to get that hand out. It's, it's very difficult. Um, some of the ways that officers are trained to deal with a person who is doing that or act, behaving in that manner is to, um, well, you're trained actually to deliver strikes, deliver knee strikes, punches, um, different pressure points, things like that. So when you see a person on his belly with a bunch of officers on top of him and they're just wailing on him, as long as they're strike him striking him in the appropriate places that is all acceptable technique that is all trained that is all something that officers are taught to do and that is an acceptable use of force so i want to make sure that we're we're clear about that in the beginning and i do believe that's very likely what was going on moments before this video started um there starts to be a problem shortly thereafter i don't know if i can got some sun problems today um shortly thereafter the problem that i start to have is that i start to see this guy's arms flailing about um, i see him trying to protect himself i see him kind of he at one time he was on his side or on his back and you could clearly see his arms uh he was still probably resisting if not just passively resisting um, but the problem is the officers were still teeing off on him as if he was a maximum resistor. Some of the things that I don't like about what I saw, obviously, are the guy who was holding his head. Um, that's something that we're trained to do. You know, you have a guy on either side, preferably you have a guy on his legs, and you have somebody on his head so that he can't start beating his head on the ground because when people are angry at us and they're under arrest and they're resisting at a maximum, maximum level, often that is something that they do. So somebody on his head is appropriate. Somebody on his head delivering um, pepper spray to his face, that is also something that is appropriate. Something that is not appropriate is beating his skull into the ground, not appropriate. Punching him in the back of the head, 
not appropriate. Um, then I believe, and it's been a couple hours since I saw this, the one guy that was a sergeant actually stood up and like soccer kicked the guy while he was on the ground. Um, I don't understand. I don't, that's not an effective use of force. It's not something that we're trained to do. That's not something that I, that this guy should be doing. Um, now some, some of my takeaways from this incident and something that I just want people to be cognizant of because we're in this day and age where every time a police officer messes up, these guys messed up. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. These guys messed up. But everybody wants those officers fired, wants those officers criminally charged, wants those officers going to prison. This is where I urge caution. And I guess the route that I'm going to go with this is that, I mean, I was forced to take what was it? A uh, cultural trauma class or be educated on um, societal trauma, something like that a couple years ago, because the powers that be don't think I understand the trauma that the citizens go through on a daily basis that live in the areas that I work in. They don't think that I understand the toll that these shootings, the drug abuse, the child abuse, they don't think that I understand how that affects the members of the neighborhoods that I police. Uh, the people who believe that are ignorant. They don't know what it is that I do. They don't know about the conversations that I have with people, but that's a conversation for another day. I just want to remind everybody that, you know, we're supposed to take, I had to take these courses so that I could understand the trauma that the citizens of these communities go through and that I'm supposed to take that into account when I'm doing police work in these communities. Um, when it comes to police officers and screwing up on the job, because that's what this is, this was a screw up on the job, as bad as it looks, it's still what it was. I urge everybody to think about the trauma that these officers have gone through and continue to go through on a daily basis and take that into account when they might have an explosion like this. Um, this guy spit on an officer and tried to assault an officer. Officers are people just like everybody else and they're gonna have bad days. Unfortunately, sometimes they're mo what's most likely to trigger their absolute worst day is something that's gonna happen to them at work. Um, just you know, I, I made a, a long Facebook post about this the other day, and I think it's worth mentioning here, where I came home from work the other day, and my oldest daughter met me at the door, and she's like, Daddy, how was work today? So I'm going to put up another sunscreen. And, you know, I, just, I was exhausted. I just walked in. I said, work was fine, nothing special. And then I went upstairs. I ended up laying on the bed. I laid in the bed with my uniform on for like a half hour. I was just tired, too tired to move. Um, I was mentally and physically exhausted from the day that I had just had. But when I came in, I told my daughter everything was fine. It was just a normal day, nothing special. Um, the day that I had, it was a fairly normal day for me. Um, but the stuff that I did during that day, I had a woman who was high on meth that was rolling around in the mud talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. We had to kind of keep her contained, help scoop her up, put her on a medic to get her to the hospital. Um, I had to go to a, a church parking lot because there were some homeless people there that were causing problems with the congregation on a Sunday morning. Um, then I went to a gas station to get try to get a cup of coffee and I couldn't even get a cup of coffee. I was flagged down about some homeless people that were literally setting up tents um, in this boxed in, fenced in area that's intended for dumpsters, these homeless people were setting up camp in there and I had to run them out. I didn't have a moment of rest during the entire day. I didn't have a moment of the day where I wasn't just going, 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 going. Um, that is like a form of trauma that police officers go through and we don't even realize it. I know that I'm not immune to it, even though I don't know that it affects me the way it affects other people. It might, 
I know for a fact that I had to change the settings on my fitness watch because I kept getting alarms all the time telling me that I need to take a break, I need to go sit down, and I was literally just driving my car. Um, there might be, you know, there's trauma that police officers go through. There might be something that's going to trigger that trauma. Getting spit on and have someone try to punch you is one of those things that might trigger one of these incidents out of a police officer. Um, another thing that I want people to consider, I looked up Crawford County, Arkansas, and you know, I had this theory about police departments and these small time police departments and police departments that don't pay people. I've mentioned this in my videos before. Um, Crawford County, Arkansas sheriff's deputies start off at $33,000 a year. To put that in perspective, the agency that I work for, officers start off on year zero at about $65,000 a year, a little bit more than that. Um, officers here are making roughly double what officers are making there in the first year. I don't know what they top out at, but I bet you they max out somewhere at or a little bit less than what um, our officers start off at. The only reason I bring that up is because if you want to encourage um, highly intelligent, successful people to be police officers for your agency, you have to pay them. If you don't have the money to pay them, you have to find the money to pay them. Um, why would anybody want to work as a police officer for that kind of money when you can make that kind of money doing a lot of other things? I guarantee there are employees at McDonald's and um, Walmart and places like that that are making more money than the police officers there. Um, I, I would rather be a used car salesman, than, which isn't a bad gig. I have some friends that are used car salesmen. Um, I would much rather do that than work for work as a police officer for that kind of money. I get paid um, three times that, almost three times that now. And there's days that I'm not sure it's worth it even for me now because I could probably go out and make some more money in the, re in the real world if I wanted to. Um, when you talk about defunding the police and taking away money and stuff, I want you to remember that incidents like this, like what happened in Arkansas, are going to be more and more common if you refuse to pay your police officers, you refuse to provide adequate training tools and equipment for your police officers. Um, I don't know. These are all of the things that I think of when I see that stuff. So did the guys screw up? Yes. Did they screw up royally? Yes. Do I think that they need to do some days off, which means serve an, a suspension? I do. I do think that this warrants a suspension. A suspension is a big deal um, in the world of police work. Um, you're giving up your pay. You're giving up your seniority. You're giving up on the opportunity to um, move up in the organization. Suspension is actually a pretty significant punishment. Um, do I think that they need to be criminally charged? No. Um, do I think that they should be fired? No, I don't because I don't know 100% that you're going to get anybody better. Um, if you're going to fire them, what is your goal? To get better officers? If you're not going to pay your officers, it's unlikely that you're going to get anything better because the guys who are better are going to go work for uh, federal agencies, they're going to go work for state agencies, or they're just not going to be the police. So, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on that incident. I hope it helps some people understand. And uh, that's just where I'm going to end it. Uh, you know, this this general stuff of just saying, hey guys, do better. Um, that that doesn't do it for me. That doesn't mean anything to me. You have to understand why these officers are doing the things that are doing. And also, I guess I didn't even explain, as an officer, I've been in this situation before where I was running up on somebody and I thought for sure I was gonna get to do that like epic use of force. Um, there were guys that were talking trash to me that um, you know, I thought for sure I was going to get to when we when we clashed it was going to be epic I thought I was going to get to finally shut that trash talker up and then the moment I got their, my hands on him 
They stopped what they were doing. They did not afford me the opportunity to have that epic use of force that I thought I was gonna have. No matter how much I wanted to do it, I didn't do it because it wasn't the right thing to do in that case. And everybody has to realize where that point is. With this particular case, um, when that guy's hands became available, that was the moment. That was the moment that you need to stop, you need to control your rage, no matter how angry you are, and you need to, you need to be a professional police officer. Um, man, and then people might criticize me for talking about being in a rage, but you can't do this job without ever feeling um, rage inside you sometimes. You know, there was a week last spring maybe where we had multiple times in the same week um, we had parents sleeping with their children their infant children roll over on them and kill them um, you you respond to one of those and you feel a certain way you respond to another one in the same week um, you feel things that you do not want to feel there there is something about being a human being that you cannot control you can't stop yourself from feeling these things but you can stop yourself from acting on these things that's one of the things that separates the good guys from the bad guys um, and you have to remember in those situations which ones you are just because just because you have a moment of being human um, doesn't make you a bad person. You just have to, I don't know, those guys have to learn how to control that. They need to take a step back for a minute. Um, they need to learn their lesson. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're horrible people and that they need to go to prison. Um, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on that. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.